One, two, three, four. Hello, hello everyone. Um, to get everything over with about myself and all the details, um, here's a little piece of Bash profile you can copy into it into your own, so it can be me for a day if you want to. Um, I'm a Rubik programmer since 2004, so I'm doing it for almost 10 years now. And nowadays I run a small company called Ascara, which is mostly doing backend work, working with databases, APIs, everything about data. And I do have weird hobbies. Um, first of all, I work on Padrino, which is a framework based on Sinatra that is somewhat like Rails, but isn't. Have a look at the website, but this is not the point of the talk. Um, it, my point of the talk are my little other things. Uh, actually, I love setting challenges. So the challenge for yesterday was for the speaker who's going to be there in the evening at the right, Nick, who's sitting over there, um, that I'm go not going to leave the bar until he's dancing with an Argentinian girl. Mission accomplished. <laughs> but the time is improv uh, improvable. <laughs> So what I'm going to talk about today is learning, and the title of the talk is Dodging the Meteor. So it all started with me being at a client who's a good friend of mine, and we were sitting at his desk and talking about how we could do things, and suddenly he asked the question, well, how did you learn all this? I was like, yeah, how did I learn all this? I don't know. So I went on and Ask the question, how do programmers that already learn all the basic stuff and are now in the, in the realm of the harder things that are not as documented and uh, well trotted out, um, still learn and how does their learning environment look like? And so I decided to pass the question around at conferences and ask people, so how do you learn, how do you learn, how do you learn, or what's your favorite trick? And this talk is basically the, the collection of all that came out and what, it, what they came up with. And first of all, um, let's be quite frank, learning is a skill like any other, so it can be learned. <laughs> um, this is a quote from someone who runs a website called Programming Workout. His point is that every day you should make 10 minutes of exercises about um, yeah, your favorite text editor, like just learn how to kill a line or kill half a line or kill a word or something, and just do workout like you would do it at a gym. And he says, I believe consistent, regular, and hard work is a sure way to become better at the skill. Now that's three things we have to accomplish, so let's see how we can do that. First of all, we're definitely talking about learning by doing. Uh, I think this is a bit of a false flag. I don't think there is learning without doing. <coughs> the matrix isn't here yet. So what do we do to do something daily? We make sure that we get into a habit. And the first thing, if you want to form a new habit, is clear the table, start afresh, and think up what you're going to do. So this is my question for you. How much time does it take you to get back to a learning project from last week and to get started again? How long? Five minutes, anyone? Five minutes? Raise your hands. More? Who needs more? Who needs less? No, no one needs more, no one needs less. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anything above one minute is far too much. Um, so you need to come up with a little system how you organize all the stuff that you, you work on for your learning experiences. And actually, there is no need for an elaborate system. So this is mine running on this laptop. Um, I have two folders, source, that is definitely only for stuff I never touched and only read. And the other thing is code, which is the other way around. It's stuff that I'm working on, but I'm, it's usually my stuff. And this is it. Works for me. But the thing I make sure is, every time I upgrade my computer or I upgrade something or I install something, I make sure that everything that I learn on, hack on, or work with compiles and works. And that's quite a list of things. That's, this is not even the biggest. So. Um, the important thing is set up time drags you down. Make sure that you can go into what you want to do as fast as possible. And you have to, sometimes you have to find ways to make that possible. So 
I'm a bit of a DevOps guy and I think it's quite good to be your own favorite DevOps and make sure that everything you want to have on your machine works. Um, um, a friend of mine put it this way, it's like if I go to the gym, if I don't pack the day ahead, I'm ne never going today. So now we worked on efficiency a bit. The problem is, um, where do we get the time? And I found it kind of surprising. First of all, all the people I, I spoke to definitely thought that work time and learning time and the pastimes are different things and that they should not be mixed. So work, basically, it has time constraints. You have things to finish. It has deadlines. You have goals for your product that you need to accomplish. But for your personal learning experience, it's much more free. You're free to skip something. Um, Things can fail every day, and there's no real pressure. You want to do that on your own. So here's the word I hate. And people often quote work-life balance. First of all, it kind of says that work isn't life. And the other thing is that maybe it's more like a work-learn pastime balance, or maybe something else. Make something up. But make sure that. This balance is your thing. It's controlled by you. So I had a boss once that said this, learn the stuff you need for work at home, because he caught me reading a book on my work time. Um, no. <laughs> he employed me for the things I can, and if he asked me to do things that I can't do, yeah, it's his fault. So now the problem is we have work ruled out, so we won't be able to learn at work. So where do we look next for some more time? And this quote wouldn't be in if not almost everyone told me that. I got far more conscious about how I consume media, and I started skipping things aggressively. So media consumption seems to be a big problem for a lot of people. Um, I don't know. Are we living in an information epidemic? I mean, you can read Hacker News all day, and I can tell you, you won't learn a thing. So um, really, really check how much of the stuff you're consuming and how much you can actually put at use for your own. And get really, really used to writing off things. So if a game is boring, even if you bought it and it was expensive, skip it. That's three hours of time. <laughs> if a TV show is bad, just stop watching it. And don't switch any media on without actually knowing that you want to do something. Like, I want to read Hacker News now for 20 minutes. That's perfectly fine. But don't do it for an hour, and don't do it at random. And I think the essence of focus is to work on things very, very consciously, or to consume things very, very consciously. So this is the basis for all of the things. And the rest I came up with was a number of what I now call uh, superchargers, like techniques that people use. So those, I will present a few of them. They might not apply to every one of you. Try them out. Um, if they don't work, just, just skip them. And the first one is I call vocabulary. So the quote for this is, um, I read a lot of literature, but I skip implementing for a while. It goes a bit against what everyone tells you, that you shouldn't read a book without hacking along with it. But the reason why it works is it allows you to, if you find new material on that space, someone wrote a blog post or something, um, you can understand the topic more in full. And it allows you to talk to people that are working on that stuff. So if you're on a conference and you just meet someone at lunch, he tells you he's working with Erlang and he talks about a process, you know that he doesn't meet operating system processes, only by reading them. So and the important part of that is, obviously, that if you know your vocabulary, you are able to think about it. And without knowing the words, you're not able to think about them. It kind of breaks your personal filter bubble. So if you learned Erlang, you know that process is a word that can be used for kind of a different thing. The second that many people mentioned is, um, even when just messing around, I strictly apply all best practices I know. So they're actually not messing around that much. 
I run a German bulletin board for Ruby, and this is actually a piece of code that someone showed. <laughs> Intonation wrong, class, a class name, fuck. <laughs> um, I mean, even if you just want to show general code, do it like this, <laughs> calmly. The thing is, many people say that I don't care, it's just demo code. I don't think so. Um, learning all your best practices as you code also improves your best practices as you, as you get along. And I think if your code is messy, your brain is messy. It really shows that you, you have no grasp of the problem at the moment. And also, the more you do it, the easier it gets. And it's easier just to show it to people immediately. I mean, if you've got the first code example in your computer and you want to show it like to anyone here in the crowd, you just look at it and, who is this guy? <laughs> the other one is perfectly fine. The third one is, I came up with the name Learning Hydra. I'm not sure if it's that much of a good name, but Many, many said that they learn many things in parallel of different difficulty levels and different ways of interest. And so what they do by this is, um, first of all, they make sure that when they're on the train or somewhere and thinking about stuff, they always, first of all, have something to think about and they suddenly get ideas about any of those things they currently have open. And the more you have, if you don't overdo it, um, the easier it is to actually get along in one of those problems at a time. And the other thing is, if you always have something to think about, like walking from the train station to your house is the moment where you can actually do processing for your learning things. The fourth is they take huge strides. So when I learn a new technology, I always set an ambitious goal. The problems popping up along the way are part of the exercise. I think an error that many do is to somehow walk in small steps and attempting to wander in directions that may be not worthwhile. So um, learn, trying to get deep into a problem means that you will have a lot of problems along the path. They're part of the exercise. It's good. Um, and if you only small, uh, plan in small steps, you might wander off in the wrong direction, and suddenly you have a problem out of your problem space, and it's kind of somewhere else. The fifth one that's definitely my favorite is um, go nuts. Do stupid stuff, like anything that doesn't have any practical value. So my favorite project I built was, uh, can JRuby be embedded into JRuby? Sure, it's a great system, it can. Problem is, it might lead to a Ruby system where you actually have two classes called object that behave the same or, but are not the same. So you have two, two different object trees. It's completely unusable, but you learn a lot about JRuby. You learn the embedding API, you know how the JRuby runtime works, you know how to extract um, objects from JRuby. But in the end, it has no practical value at all. A sixth one, um, pass your knowledge along. Um, I, before that, it, this section was called teaching. I don't know if ev everyone <laughs> would want to become a teacher. But you can always help others with your skills, even if you're at a lower level. So explaining to others exposes the flaws in your own thinking. So you have to write up everything that you learned again. and well, you haven't understood what you can't explain. So start answering questions on mailing lists, sports, Twitter, Stack Overflow. What do I know? But in a proper and detailed way, not just a one-liner. Make it at least a paragraph. So number seven. Number seven is sometimes the hardest nowadays um, because it takes multiple steps. The first step is disconnect your Ethernet cable. Second is disconnect your Wi-Fi. Third one is turn your phone into flight mode and every other device you have, go offline. Um, everyone I spoke to said that often it takes like two hours, three hours off and then starts working on the problem. 
Because the reason is it forces you to work with what you have. You cannot fill any of your gaps in your thinking by just Googling it. So all the solutions, all the things that you cannot solve by yourself, you have to somehow invest a little bit more work to still find a solution. And they came up with this phrase, I think Google is a bit like training wheels for your bike. So every time you have to reach for Google, it's basi you're basically saying, I don't know how to get from A to B without the help of others. It's a great helper in our work environment. It's definitely good, and it improves our work environment by a lot in our productivity. But from time to time, you should attempt to make something from the beginning to the end uh, alone. So what's the thing about dodging the meteor? Thing is, I believe that in five or 10 years, none of us will program like today. Most of us won't even program in Ruby anymore or in Rails. So six years ago, I started programming LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, um, without a framework. And that was definitely OK. Everyone was OK with that. That was the state of the art. And suddenly, something struck, and it wasn't the state of the art anymore. People either went to PHP frameworks, or they went to Rails, or, or started doing stuff in Django. Uh, suddenly, the whole game leveled up. Well, Plant Lamp is now completely empty. So what's the media that will hit Planet Ruby on Rails? I don't know. I think it won't be Haskell. Haskell is more like a comet. It always, like, every community sometimes has a look at Haskell, and it's like, well, that's nice. And then they have a hard look, and then, yeah, but that's hard, and that's impractical. <laughs> I think it's more like Clutter and Scala. Um, a lot of the Ruby community now are interested in Clutter and Scala, so maybe we, s we will see people going over there. So the point is, be on the lookout. Because the problem is, um, if you don't learn, you're on a fast track to becoming a dinosaur. And as you see on that little guy on the, on the right, meteors, dinosaurs get hit by meteors. <laughs> and Google is training wheels. This is a list of people that helped me in this through discussions. Um, to, by answering my questions and discussions and discussions again, thank you to all of them. Follow all of them on Twitter. They're really, really nice. Thank you. Bueno, preguntas, questions? Alguien? Como hombre, ahora. Acá alguien para después. Preguntas, questions? <coughs> okay. Uh, I know. I know there are tests to to actually learn how to learn that tell you if you learn by reading, by, by doing, by moving. Uh, did you ever do any, any kind of this test, or what, what's your opinion about it? Um, I, I never did any of those tests, so I obviously have no opinion about it. Uh, <laughs> no, I believe, <laughs> I believe there's, that. There's, there's a lot of books about the topic, and also a lot of research about the topic. So um, if you're interested, it's, it's definitely worthwhile to read them. Um, I think there's also there's at least five books on programmatic programmers about the topic, just about the topic of learning. Yeah, I um, I, I, I believe uh, that uh, also learning how to learn is uh, a part finding how how do you how do you uh, consume information. I yeah, mean, yeah. Sure. I, I'm I'm not I'm not used to 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 learn by by coding actually. I, I'm uh, quite more uh, comfortable by, by by reading books. At first, mm -hmm. and then coding, and I think that that's important to to take into account when you when you try to learn something. Yeah, it's definitely an, an individual thing. Thing always check on how how well all this works. So get conscious about the, your learning and check whether the things you are attempting are actually yielding any. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, that's it. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Any more questions? Hello, nice talk. Thank you. Um, 
do you think that learning implies forgetting all stuff to release resources in our world that changed so fast? I usually think it is, but I want to, to know your opinion. I, I don't know about forgetting that much. Um, I think it's more like putting stuff away and keeping a reference that you that you once did that. <laughs> so, um, as I said, doing work, I'm, I'm actually doing things, I'm actually looking up things on Google quite often. Um, it's just that um, I think it's, it's really ab also about aggressively putting things away, yeah. So some of you write, um, because it might clog up your memory. Um, so you will, uh, you will always have things on your mind that you're using, uh, doing regularly, but never forget about the thing that you did. Yeah, but. More questions? Does? No. Bueno, un fuerte aplauso para Florian.